Salmon in the Northwest are, are really, you know, part of the fabric of our society. These are fish that carry more importance than their weight as meat. Salmon runs in Washington State are declining because much of their habitat, like these small forest streams, are blocked by these seemingly insignificant culverts. Many people don't realize how important these small streams are to salmon and trout. A fish passage barrier is uh, often a culvert, but it can be any man-made structure that either fully or partially blocks fish passage during certain times of the year. The Family Forest Fish Passage Program was created by the legislature in 2003, and this was in response to the fact that small forest landowners are required to fix their fish barriers on their property. This is a program that is designed to improve fish passage and uh, reduce maintenance concerns for private citizens. For the mom and pops, when you're asking them to put in a $120,000 bridge, it's a problem. So this program was created to help alleviate that financial burden. This is a statewide program. They get a new bridge or a culvert. It gets money into the local communities, helps the fish. We call it 3F2P. We were asked if we'd like to come to a seminar, and we went down there and I saw this little brochure, you know, and I just got looking into it and I thought, you know, this is great. This is what we need. We have a, a barrier in our creek, and I, I'm going to need to do something before too long about that. Well, I guess I understood was that there was money available for a project like this, and uh, I knew if this goes through, it was going to be a great asset to this piece of property. The process typically comes in the form of a landowner making contact with us. The entire thing's engineered, and we do it all for them. So it's a very simple from the landowner's perspective. When we first meet these landowners and we're discussing the program with them, uh, they do seem a little skeptical. It really is as good a deal as it sounds. You know, it's the practicality of it. And your landowner is like, uh, we've only got a limited amount of resources here. We're not a super big company. We're not somebody with deep pockets. You know, we've got kids in college. We pay our own medical insurance. And we could never put a bridge in like this. But before we even signed up, I want to know that there were no strings attached. There are no tricks here. There are no hidden costs. There are no hidden commitments. They came and gave me the straight skinny on this thing right from the beginning, and uh, it's just, everything has just been right. DNR is really helpful, you know, and uh, they'll help you through every, every step of the way. If you have questions, they'll answer the questions. Well, I would advise anybody to uh, take advantage of a program like this. Triple F is a, is a great example of, I think, a, a super partnership between private citizens who stand to benefit from the program, local nonprofits like Wild Fish Conservancy, and several state agencies that are involved in the program. It's, it's a rare, I think, example of uh, a very effective partnership among a diverse group of interests. After we received funding, and the bridge goes in, and, um, you know, Basically, it's up to us to keep the bridge open. You know, we can send out a, a fully loaded log truck, which, you know, you could have 105,000 pounds going across this thing and you're just fine. This bridge means a lot to me because for years I've kept the old culvert open and of course my kids or whoever owns this is going to be using this for forever. I encourage people to to take a serious look at their property, to see what are the things that they can do to enhance its value for the, for the public and for themselves. The program really is a no-brainer. There's no downsides to it. It's a win for the landowner, it's a win for the people of Washington, and most importantly, it's a win for the environment. With a minimal investment, fish passage projects really, I think, give us one of the biggest bangs for our buck. Anybody that was skeptical and, and might think this is uh, going to turn into a bureaucratic nightmare will find out just the opposite. It's really uh, been a breeze to, to go through this whole thing. And doing the right thing is important, and uh, this is definitely the right thing. This project on Goliath Creek fulfilled Mr. Baker's requirement to correct his barrier culvert. 
and salmon now have access to over four miles of stream habitat. That little creek in your backyard could be fantastic salmon habitat. By reopening up access to miles of habitat above these barriers, then we've inherently uh, and undeniably increased the production potential for that watershed. The Department of Fish and Wildlife just places a very high priority on restoring habitat for salmon. I know that what I'm doing here is going to affect salmon for hundreds of years, and it's, uh, it's very satisfying. We've never had fish in it before, so now I realize that, you know, there can be fish in here and there will be fish. There are little fish now, you know, and this, this was possible through all the cooperation of all the different agencies that stepped up at each step of the way, and uh, every one of them was just tremendous to work with. It was a wonderful process. I have nothing but good things to say. Don't be afraid. Do it. <laughs>